Well, first of all, thanks very much indeed for chatting to us today. Delighted to be here, thanks. So we're all, we're all digital health people these days, aren't we? We're all wearing our watches, we've all got our devices, but what is digital health? I mean, digital health is using digital tools to deliver healthcare. And, you know, it started with the electronic health record. Now it's AI tools and digital apps and all sorts of things. And there's a lot of promise, certainly for digital health. And I think we're gonna see more and more promising tools coming to the marketplace. What are some of the biggest innovations? What are some of the biggest changes that we've seen in healthcare and particularly uh, in psychiatric health? Well, certainly as digital health uh, changes uh, the landscape, you know, telemedicine uh, has exploded. And because of the pandemic, we probably had 10 years of progress in six months through the adoption and use of telehealth in particular. And that has been a game changer for psychiatry. It's improved access, it's improved accessibility. Uh, in the US, we've got pandemic flexibility extensions through the end of calendar 2024. And in my role as president of the AMA, we're continuing to push for those flexibilities to be permanently extended so the patients can have access to telepsychiatry and other telehealth platforms, uh, hopefully for the long run. So what about data? I mean, we must be pretty good now at, uh, at using data, at storing data. So, so how could does data come into this? We've gotten better. We're not there yet. Obviously, a lot of the algorithms, the promising AI tools are all fed and rely on data and having data standards, making sure that data is interoperable is a core piece of the AMA's digital strategy to make sure that these tools actually work for patients and physicians. Um, but even if you look at an important space like the social determinants of health. We talk about it all the time, um, but the data standards around how do you know if a patient has housing insecurity? How do you know if a patient has access to refrigeration for medications that they might need at home? Right now, we still don't have clear, consistent documentation fields in our electronic health records. So we're working with the Gravity Project as one way to try to bring those standards forward to improve how we collect data and then ultimately how we can use it. One of the other issues with data though, isn't it safeguarding data? Is that a big issue? You know, there's a lot of concern, particularly with the huge cyber attack on United Healthcare, Change Healthcare, which probably a third of all Americans' healthcare data has been exposed about how do we truly keep patient privacy and how do we make sure that we protect from cybersecurity? There is no answer to that. And I think we have a lot of anxiety to make sure that we protect particularly sensitive details from a patient's health record. What about AI? Everybody, every conference, every meeting I go to, everybody wants to talk about AI. So how does AI affect digital health? We are at the peak of the hype curve. We are in an AI era. It is everywhere. I can't go an hour without asking about chat GPT or large language models. Um, AI is going to be helpful. It is used in 40% of practices in the US today, but it's not the sexy stuff. It's supply chain management, it's billing, it's scheduling, it's those back-end office operations where if there is a mistake, it's not the end of the world. The clinical applications, the therapy chatbots, uh, the prescribing decision support tools, those things are coming. What they will mean for practice, I don't know, but I do know one thing, AI will not replace psychiatrists, but psychiatrists who use AI will replace those who don't. Yeah, it's a pretty bold statement though to say that AI won't replace psychiatrists, isn't it? How do we know that? So it's clear to me that when I'm sick, when I'm hurting, I want a person to be able to touch my shoulder, to be on the other end of directing my care. And computers will never replace that. We know that there's something so foundational about the profession and the practice of medicine it's about the humanity that we bring in the care that we deliver. Our last question is, I want to encourage you to look into a crystal ball, Jesse, and I want you to tell me what do you see the, the biggest innovations happening over maybe the next five years? Scalability. So we have a healthcare workforce crisis. There's a crisis in psychiatry. There's a crisis in behavioral health. There's a crisis in all of healthcare. 83 million Americans do not have access to primary care. 125 million Americans do not have access to behavioral health services. The only way we're going to solve this is not by opening a thousand new medical schools. That will never happen. It's only by leaning into technology to scale the capacity of our existing care teams by augmenting and boosting our capabilities. Well, thank you very much for joining us today. Fascinating stuff. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks.